This is the Uncommon Cold with Mr. Phipps and Ms. Gardner. Perfectly placed because we both have colds. Um, I'm going to be reading the procedure. Mr. Phipps will be carrying out the procedure. First of all, review safety precautions before you're beginning the lab. Okay, are we ready to go? Sure. I think your goggles need to be put in place, Mr. Phipps. <laughs> but I value the back of my head. <laughs> Not as much as your eyeballs. All right. And notice the lovely aprons they have on today. Stunning, I must say. We've got uh, a liter of boiling water here, and I prefer not to have it soaked into my pants. Check to make sure the 1,000 milliliter beaker on the ring stand contains about 700, or I think we filled ours to 800. Good. The main idea is that we want to make sure that when we submerge our flask, it's entirely, as much of the flask as possible is under the water, because we want to reach equilibrium with the temperature of the water. Turn on the hot plate and place it under the 1,000 milliliter beaker. Good. Well, that's all set. Make sure that the inside of the flask is dry. If it is not, talk to your teacher. Great. It looks dry right now. Maybe when we're done, we can demonstrate how to dry it out. Sounds good. Place the one hole rubber stopper without the glass rod. No glass rod. Bring it, uh, hold on, bring it in closer. Great. Double underline bolding. Don't lose the glass rod, so leave it in your tray. Snugly in the neck of the flask. Snugly not being the blanket thing you wear <laughs> at the TV. Submerge the flask in the hot boiling water. It is critical that the water cover the entire spherical portion of the flask. And that we don't overflow the boiling water. Looks covered. Bring the water to a boil and continue to boil the empty flask for five minutes. So we'll see you back in five minutes. Looks as though the water is boiling. And it's been boiling for nearly five minutes. So are we ready to take the temperature? Yep, measure the temperature of the boiling water as close to the flask wall as you can. Be sure the thermometer does not touch the bottom of the beaker because that would be too hot. We really want to know the temperature of the gas inside, and the easiest way to do that is to measure the temperature of the water near it. Do we have the temperature? It's, it Ooh, looks it keeps like going we're, up, so. yeah, we're still approaching. The alcohol in the thermometer is still moving, so we need to wait. Now it looks like it's leveled out at 98.5 degrees Celsius. I like the way you used your lease count in your first best guess. That was Thank good. <laughs> Check to make sure that the bucket in the sink contains ice water. Got if ice not, water. If not, you should add more ice this time, but we have ice. You're good. After the flask has been in the boiling water for five minutes, turn off the burner, but do not remove the flask from the water. Immediately place the glass rod in the hole in the rubber stopper to seal off the sample of gas and the temperature of the boiling water. Excellent, nice timing. Raise the flask out of the hot water and let it stand on the ring stand for two to three minutes. Never remove the clamp from the boiling flask. The reason you're leaving the flask out for two or three minutes is because if you immediately put it in the ice water, crack! Okay, so then you'll break it and you have to start all over again. Not a good thing. Remove the flask clamp assembly from the ring stand, turn it upside down, and submerge it okay, in the Okay, let ice me water. see, Mr. Phipps. The whole clamp assembly, so that's all of that metal all stuff. All of this part, I just took it right off the ring stand. Did not Everything fill else with this. is sealed up. Okay. Upside down, and in it goes. Okay, I'm going to move over there. Great. Keep the flask clasp assembly submerged for five minutes. Now you'll notice it gets really cold holding your hand in ice water for five minutes and it hurts. So the flask, as long as it's sealed, doesn't have to be upside down. I am holding on to the clamp and my hand is above the water and the flask is 
fully submerged in the ice water. Let's leave it for a few minutes. And we're back. We're ready to measure the temperature of the ice water. And while I do that, maybe Mr. Hips, you can talk about how you've put your hand into the water. Sure. Um, I'm getting ready to pull the um, glass rod out. So let me take this out just for a moment to show you how I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold two fingers over to keep the stopper in place so that I can pull out just the glass rod. This lessens the chance that any air escapes from the flask. If the stopper comes out, but no bubbles come out, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. So with it submerged and it's been here for five minutes, it should be at equilibrium with the temperature of the ice water. Now, for our demonstration purposes, we didn't keep too careful track of the ice, so we've got a temperature that's a little higher. It's about 12.9. So we're going to record that temperature, assume that this is at equilibrium, and I'm going to go ahead and pull out the stopper. So I just grab down here, give it a little wiggle, and you can see a bunch of water came into the flask. Now I wait for a moment just to make sure that's there, and I'm going to put my finger over the stopper so that no air bubbles escape, because I want the number of air particles in there to stay the same. Wow! Water went in? So what's happened to the volume... Hold on, I get a, oh, there we go. ...of air inside that flask? Looks like the volume of air has gone down. Great. <clears throat> now, it's fine to take this off, because all we need to do is measure the volume of water here, and then we can figure out the volume of air here, but there's one more piece of information we need to know. What is the volume of the flask as a whole? Mm. So, so uh, okay, go ahead, sorry. So, we're going to uh, take this off, and we need to get a graduated cylinder, which we forgot to put out. Thank you, Ms. Millender. Hang this up. I'm going to put the stopper back in my basket so I don't lose it. And here comes Ms. Millinder with our graduated cylinder. Ms. Millinder with the cylinder. Here we go. <laughs> so, we just want to be careful we don't spill any water. Because if we spill the water, we got to start again. So, Ms. Gartner, can you come and help confirm my reading on here? I'm going to make a reading, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. And you'll make a reading, and we'll make sure we agree. What did you get? I want to say the same thing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> 62.3? Hey, that's what I got. Nice! <laughs> All right. Now, let's be sure we write that down before we pour it out in case we forget. So, we're going to get out our data table. And we're going to write down 62.3 milliliters. What other two pieces of information did we gather that also need to be on the data table? Temperatures. Mm -hmm. Temperature before and temperature after. Or hot temperature and cold temperature. You got it. All right. Now that we've recorded that, we can pour this water out. And the other piece of information we need to know is what is the total volume of this flask? If we fill it up with water, we can measure that. Only, was all that volume filled with air? Nope. We had the stopper to displace some of it. So we're going to squeeze that stopper right in there. Take that out. And let's measure this volume. <gasps> we 
going to have to do it more than once. We are. We're going to have to do it many times. Does it matter how much we put in this time? Mm, as long as it's below 100, I think it's not a problem. I think so. But we should make sure we write it down before we pour that out. Yep. I get 92.4. I said 92.6. Is that probably. within uncertainty? Yep. Which one do you want to write down? Uh, either one. 92.6 millimeters. Sixty-seven point eight. Sixty-seven point nine. Let's do go with sixty-seven point eight this time. <clears throat> Looks like we're probably going to have to do this four times. Maybe not. Well, we uh, definitely yeah. don't want to go above one hundred. Notice the concentration on their faces. 93.1. I agree. data, we can make sure everything looks clean and neat like it did when we started. And the hot plate is off, off. so I'm not worried about safety. Good. Maybe we should even unplug it. Thank you. Go. So it's important before we do this experiment that there's no water on the inside of the container. Because if there is, we're going to turn that into water vapor, and then when we put it in the ice water, that water vapor is going to condense. And that means we won't have the same number of particles in our initial time and our final time. So, if there's any sign of water on the inside, you need to make sure you dry it. So, we're going to light up a Bunsen burner, and we're going to take the flask, and we're going to heat it. Uh, now, there may be some drips, we can try to shake those out. Uh, you can see, as we're heating it, you can see condensation forming on the sides as we boil away that water, those droplets of water, and they recondense on the colder parts of the tube, uh, of the glass. So it's important that as we heat this, we heat the whole glass. Now, because I just used this flask, it's pretty wet on the inside, so this is going to take a little while. Um, but already you can see the amount of condensation on the sides decreasing as we boil away that water. Okay? And we're going to heat it all the way up the neck, being careful though not to heat um, the plastic clamp too much. Um, and when we're done with this, we're going to have to remember that even though that glass doesn't look hot, it is hot. So don't touch it. Okay? Thank you.